Welcome to another episode of Inquiry in the Classroom, a video series from Madly Learning. Today, we're talking about learning goals and success criteria. Inquiry in the Classroom is something that Ontario is using pretty prolifically, which is where I teach. It is student-centered teaching that takes student interest and curiosity and turns it into real learning through questioning, investigating, observing, and collaborating. It has transformed how I teach in my classroom. I am no longer the sage on the stage, the giver of knowledge, but together with my students, we create learning together that meets our curriculum expectations and standards. So what are learning goals and success criteria? They are sentences that are written in student-friendly language. They often start with sentence starters like I can or we can, and they cover the big ideas of what students are learning about. Often they are based on our, on our student expectations or our standards that we're covering that are given to us by our employers. And these are created they're the big ideas that we create with our students so that we know where we're starting and where we're going. Success criteria are the criteria that you have that tell your students what they need to be able to do in order to achieve their big ideas. They're like the baby steps in order to what they need to do to successfully complete and accomplish their goal. The other really important part about learning goals and success criteria is that they need to be clearly posted and very explicit for students. I have a bulletin board in my classroom, one for each subject, and on that board, in the center of the board, often is our learning goals and success criteria that we post and that we are constantly referring to throughout our entire learning time about what it is that we're trying to accomplish and where we're going and where, where we're headed. Sometimes people ask, well, why are these important? Why do we need to post learning goals and success criteria? They haven't always been necessary. I can't think of a time in the classrooms that I grew up in that whether or not we even had learning goals and success criteria posted. The teacher just told us what we were learning and we just did as we were told. In today's classroom, especially in my classroom, students need to join in the creation of their own knowledge. They need to know where they're going and they need to have an active role. With the internet and Google, the teacher is no longer the expert in the classroom. Students can Google the answers. You're not the only person with the answer anymore as a teacher. So we need to involve students in their own learning and they need to be engaged in what they're doing. So they need to know where they're going and that's the whole point of having learning goals and success criteria posted. And the fact that they're co-created with students. It's not just the teacher coming in and telling students what it is they're going to learn. I mean, we have things we have to cover, but we're not the ones that are just arbitrarily deciding what it is we're going to learn and the direction that our learning is going to take. We're doing that with our students. Now, to be honest, there is an element of there being manipulation happening where we may need to manipulate the learning environment so that students go in the direction that we are required to go. There's certain things in every classroom that you must teach as a teacher. We don't have complete free reign. But with that manipulation and the facilitation of the learning, you can get students to go where you need them to go. How do I use learning goals and success criteria in a classroom that is based on inquiry? Well, as I said, they need to be co-created. So I'm creating them with my students. So we talked before about knowledge building circles and Wonderwall sessions. So the learning goal and success criteria happens right after that. So the third lesson per se. So once you've done your knowledge building circle and you've shared those images with your students and once they've come up with questions and they've put those questions up on their sticky notes on the wonder wall and they're all random all over your wonder wall and they're completely disorganized. Then it's time to organize those questions into themes and that's where you co-create the learning goals. So by organizing the students questions and wonderings, perhaps questions that you may have had to lead them to get to, but you're gonna, pull, you're gonna take those sticky notes and you're gonna reorganize them into themes. Now, sometimes this takes time. At the beginning of our inquiry journey, I'm often doing this without the students in the room because I wanna get an overview of 
where they're going and what they're heading. And I want to kind of have a plan in place before we do it together. So the next day, I will often have their sticky notes organized for them at the beginning. Nearing the end of our inquiry process, as I've done a few units with the same students nearing the end of the year, we can do this together because it's a fairly quick process. But at the beginning, as we're modeling the inquiry journey, this is something that I have to do with students or by myself and then bring the students along for the ride. So we organize the sticky notes into categories. So for instance, when I taught my First Nations and early European explorers unit, I was able to organize the student sticky notes into three main categories. One was about First Nations culture. The other was about contact with early Europeans. And the third was about the impact of that contact between the two groups of people. When we have that, we can organize those into those subtopics and then we can start looking at those student questions and starting to develop success criteria. What do you need in order to be able to achieve that goal? So our learning goal would have been what or we can learn or we want to know about First Nations communities before contact with Europeans. And that was our learning goal. Well, how are we going to learn that? Well, that's where we had to come up with our success criteria. So based on the, some of their questions, they identified that some of the things are religion. So they would need to know about the First Nations religion, their food, what they did for fun. They had lots of questions about what kids did, education, jobs. And from there, we were able to develop the success criteria as to the different aspects of their culture that we had to look at prior to contact. So we had a learning goal. We want to know more about First Nations communities before contact with Europeans. That was our big idea. That's what we wanted to be able to accomplish. And our success criteria was how we were going to achieve that. So it included all the aspects of culture, which was great because it built on the previous understandings of communities that they did in grade three and also on civilizations that they did in grade four. So they had a little bit of background knowledge to be able to start there and move on to what the culture of the First Nations communities were. So with that, they now had the roadmap. So in order to achieve that overall goal of we are going to learn about First Nations culture before con contact, they now had what they needed to be able to fill in. And this is where we ordered our learning goals. So we knew that one had to be the one that we started with. We couldn't start learning about the impact that First Nations communities and early European explorers had on one another before we understood what happened before that. And that was some great learning for students to understand that they needed to organize their learning prior to beginning their journey. Plus, the comp it's a complicated thing to learn about the impact that two cultures have on one another. So we had to learn that background knowledge. And that often is how it happens. When you have learning goals and success criteria, you have to build that background knowledge component first before you can get really deep into the inquiry and start looking at the application and the critical thinking skills. They have to have the background knowledge built into place prior to being able to do that really in-depth inquiry project that often happens at the end of their learning cycle. So as we begin our inquiry journey, we have our success criteria, we have our roadmap, and students understand what they need to do in order to achieve that learning goal. So it's almost like you're giving them the test answers or the test questions weeks before you're ever going to formally assess their learning. And that's the point. Students know where they're going to go. They know where they're headed. They know what you're wanting them to learn. They know that everything that you ask them to do or you set them up to be able to do or they start doing in the classroom all has a focus on where they're going and what they're going to have to achieve at the end. And that's really valuable. When students start seeing the link that, that that chart paper that you've posted in the middle of the bulletin board, that's what they're learning, that's where they're going to, that's what they need to be able to cover in order to be successful. Once they've made that link, it, you're ready to go. 
By the end of my term last year, and I was doing my structures and forces unit, students would just say, okay, so if we've got this learning goal and these success criteria, if we just design a project that hits all of those things, then we can prove to you that we understand the expectations. Is there anything else that we need to add? An amazing conversation from 11 year olds. And it was because of the, over the time and over practice that they understood that that chart paper guided all of our learning throughout the entire unit. The biggest thing I hear from colleagues when talking about learning goals and success criteria is, okay, yeah, I put them up, but they never look at them. And okay, I was there too. I had students, I would put up my learning goals and they'd look really pretty and then they'd never look at them, they'd never reference them. And it would almost be a waste of a lesson and time. But what I learned is the more value that I put on the learning goal and success criteria, the more adherence that I had to keeping true to those and referencing those and me using them and me referring students to them and really using those at the center of our learning, the more I used them, the more the students used them. The more I tied all of our learning to what was on that chart paper, the more the students referenced them and then demanded that they were there. They really wanted to know, okay, where are we going? What are we doing? How are we gonna get there? Let's get through this. I wanna do my final project because I'm, I'm interested in doing a Minecraft model of the human body. So I wanna get there fast. So give me the criteria so that I know what I can do. You have to, as a teacher, understand that your job in supporting your students in inquiry is to help them build the knowledge that they're looking for. They're the ones that are deciding what they're interested in based on an overall goal. So I may give them the overall topic when we do our knowledge building circle, but they may decide the direction that they're going. Back to that First Nations unit, once we got into the impact, students really got interested in smallpox, of all things, smallpox, which I'm sure I don't have to tell you, is difficult for a 10 and 11 year old to be able to research smallpox in the 1700s and its impact on the Huron-Wendat culture and, and how the French contributed to that. That's a pretty narrowly focused interest. So I had to help support the students at following what that interest was. I didn't know much about it. I had to learn, I had to read, but what ended up happening was we had to authentically figure out how we were gonna find out information to that. And that led to students contacting experts throughout the province and even into Quebec to ask them and to Skype with them. So we had Skype sessions in the classroom just by following student interest. I could have steered them towards the fur trade, which would have been a lot easier to find research on, but their interest was on the smallpox. And through that interest, that was their hook and they were able to stay focused on that. So our learn we were still able to accomplish our learning goals and our success criteria based on their interest of smallpox. And my job is to facilitate that learning and not to quash what they're interested in just because it might be difficult for them to be able to do that. So to take what they're interested in, weave that into their learning goals and success criteria and being able to support them through there. Through their learning goals, students are directing their own interests. They're creating the questions. They're helping um, to come up with what it is that they're going to be needing to do to be successful. You can do that together. At the beginning of your inquiry journey, it's gonna be a little bit harder. It's gonna be kind of messy. There's a lot more teeth pulling. You're going to have to really focus on pulling out that information at the beginning because trust me, it is not pretty when you start inquiry. Pulling out the success criteria, you will have a lot of blank faces. They won't know what you're wanting. You're going to have to model it for them at the beginning. And you, But you've gotta be okay with that messiness. It's messy, it's ugly, it's, 
it's uncomfortable. It makes, you just want to be in control of your classroom and control of everything that's learning. You just want everything to go smoothly. It's not always going to, but the rewards at the end of that journey are so much more beneficial than if you had just given them all of the answers. So you really have to start thinking of yourself as the facilitator that is going to help them accomplish their goals as opposed to the person that's giving them what they're going to learn. That they are no longer a passive participant in this learning journey. That they are active and they have just as much say, or at least you need to make them feel, that they have just as much say as you do in the direction that their learning is going to go. The learning goals and success criteria are also not just beneficial for the students. They're also beneficial for you as the teacher. Because you're not the one planning every single lesson linear, that you're kind of going more with the flow, having learning goals and success criteria is kind of what you can hold on to so that you have a direction in which you can prepare. So students may be interested in this if you're teaching structures. My curriculum documents say that I need to teach structures. They give some suggestions, but students can choose what kind of structures they're interested in. I've lucked out that two years in a row they've been interested in bridges. So when I get that learning goal that their focus, all of their questions are on bridges and they're really not interested in, in building houses and towers, but they're building bridges, that gives me the insight that the materials I need to start gathering to support their inquiry need to be about bridges. So my job is to then find the information for them so that they can be more successful at finding the answers to their own questions. We are the facilitator that's helping students meet their goals. We're setting them up for success, but we're not top down. We're doing it together. And in all reality, there still is. There's an element of you're kind of tricking them into ownership of their own learning because you still have, you still have things you need to cover. You still have um, expectations that they need to be doing. So you can guide them there. And depending on where they are in the inquiry journey will determine how much guidance you're taking. Are you holding their hands really, really tightly and walking them down the path? Or are you simply walking beside them and helping them? Or are you walking behind them and letting them go and seeing where they are? It all depends on where their journey is. Making sure that those learning goals and success criteria are the center of all learning is the most important. I would recommend dedicating a bulletin board in your classroom. If you are not fortunate enough to have a lot of wall space for whatever reason, get one of those trifold boards and just set it up. So if you're a teacher on Rotary or, or you don't have your own classroom and you're going in to teach science or social studies, set up a board that's always there for students when you're in the room that they can go to and it is the center of your learning. And don't be afraid to change it. Things are going to change. The direction, students may find some information that's really interesting to them and all of a sudden your learning may take a sharp right hand turn. And that's okay, go with them because that interest and engagement is what you're looking for. That buy-in from students, that's the value that you're looking for. And it can't happen without the learning goals and success criteria. So I would really encourage you to make sure that you have a space in your classroom that you can clearly post those. You start off with the big ideas, that you'll often get those from your curriculum. You make sure that your knowledge building circle artifacts that you're using help support that learning goal so that you can kind of guide them in the direction that you're mandated to cover. And then you take this, you talk with them about, well, what do we need to do to be successful? And you write it down explicitly and then students know the roadmap. And then for assessment, it's very easy. Show me what you know. That criteria is what they need to do. They need to be able to show that they have all three learning goals. Can they show you that they're successful? That's 
that's it. I, sometimes it's the easiest assessment piece. And I know that that's huge for some teachers is how do I assess inquiry? Show you what they know. If they've gotten the learning, then that learning would be assessed on that success criteria. They know what it is, you know what it is, and that makes it a little bit easier. And you can monitor that throughout the way through referencing it and talking about it. Um, our human body unit was uh, probably my light bulb moment, moment when we did our human body unit. And I said to students, okay, so we talked about, we need to learn about those three, three different organ systems. And then you need, they told us, or they, we came up together with a success criteria that was the same for each one of the systems. And one of my students came up to me and said, can I just show you? Like, can I just design my project that shows you that I know everything about that? Cause I've been working on like doing research and stuff at home and being able, and I was like, okay, sure. And we just sat down and he just showed me and he, he was able to hit all the success criteria and it was simple. I don't think I did a test because I didn't have to. I knew where they were and it didn't have to be this complicated thing. It was just, they showed me what they knew and it was all, they referenced that success criteria and it was all back there. I will post photos of my boards that I had for those specific units that included the wonder walls and also our learning goals and success criteria on my blog. I will also post my notes for this video as well so that if you don't have time to watch the video or you just want a specific part, it'll be on there on my blog too. So if you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to hit the follow button down at the bottom and you'll get notified of the next time I'm going live, which will be next week. We'll talk about different things. If you have any suggestions of what kind of questions you have about using inquiry, Feel free to send me a note, put it on my Facebook page or send me an email at info at and I will talk about different aspects of inquiry that you tell me you're interested in hearing about. If you want to stay connected through social media, you can find me on the various social media sites. I'm actually pretty easy to follow on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook here and Pinterest. It's all at Madly Learning. And again, any more information, there'll be additional information that I'm gonna post on my blog later this afternoon with my notes and some photos so that you can see kind of the things that I'm talking about. And that'll be at www.madlylearning.com. And as well, if you are struggling with inquiry and need a head start and want access to some of the artifacts that I use for my knowledge building circles, some of the learning goals and success criteria that I've used and how I use inquiry in my units, you can check out my Teachers Pay Teachers store, which has all of the inquiry units that I use in my classroom with all of those supports that I'm talking about here built in. Thank you very much for joining in. I really appreciate all of the comments and the love. Thank you very much. And we will see you next week. Talk to you later. Bye. This has been another episode of Inquiry in the Classroom by Madly Learning. For all your inquiry needs, please check out my store, Madly Learning on Teachers Pay Teachers, where I specialize in inquiry units for junior grades with a focus on meeting the complex needs of the split grade teacher.